This is allegedly meant to be the prelude to the funeral for this is again taken from the fight and the kids suffered it. And it, they're saying that this is the prelude to the funeral fit. This might explain why the funeral fit was even a situation in the first place. So let's see when while I'll go on for this. Let me get this up on the screen. Make this nice and big. And let's go. This is from the king and the sting and the wing. Now I'm still not understanding why this is called the king and the sting when the king is gone. Right? Wasn't the king meant to be Fia Vaughn and the sting is meant to be Brenda because he's a, he looks like he's been stung by bees and the wing is meant to be, you know, um, Crystalia because, you know, he's got that bird thing he got going on because I think people say he looks like a bird. I don't know. But why is it called the king still? Why didn't you just call it sting in the wing? Why have why have the king? The king's not on there anymore. It kind of defeats the whole purpose of the show, no? I don't know. Maybe I'm talking about my ass. But anyway, let's continue. Um, I got to go to a funeral tomorrow, man. Well, that'll, that's, plug that. <laughs> oh, I think they're live streaming it. Check out my grandma's funeral. Uh, is it your grandma? I'll be selling merch out oh the my back. God. Is it really? Uh, okay, I mean, Calusa, she was ninety-eight. Calusa it's not a sad Casino, thing. October twenty-eighth. Yeah, <laughs> Calusa making up casinos, dude. Um, uh, 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 so that's sad. I'm sorry. Uh, don't be. Uh, I wasn't that close with her. My dad's like one of thirteen. Mm. You know, she's cool. You're she was You know what's funny about this? Again, like I always say. Do you remember the way he sobbed and cried about Crystalia getting cancelled for allegedly touching up underage girls? Yet he feels nothing about his grandmother dying. You can't feel sad for people dying because they're old, which is a weird way to kind of contextualize things. And but yet you're going to a funeral of somebody that you weren't too close with, and that he's kind of trying to paint the idea that his dad wasn't close with you because he was one of thirteen. What? So in Brendan's head, if you if you're from a family where you have loads of siblings, you're not necessarily gonna have a connection with your parents because there's loads of you. That doesn't make any sense. Like there's single kid there's there's kids that have been raised in single parent households who aren't close to their parents. There's kids who have got seventeen siblings and they're close to their parents. Like it doesn't work out that way. Every family and household is completely different. But this idea just because you're born uh, in a big family that you're not gonna be close to your parents is flipping crazy. <laughs> And if he wasn't that close to his to his grandma, why are you going to the funeral? Why would your dad just tell you just don't go in it? If you, you know you you're, you're, you didn't really know her too tough, you didn't really associate, just don't go. But he's going anyway, so it just defeats the whole purpose of the whole argument. It's very very strange. <laughs> Ninety eight. But I love how determined he is to tell them, no, I'm not bothered. I don't care about it. I'm not emotional at all. But again, if again, God forbid, touch wood. But if Chris D was to flipping pass away and they flipping fire in his J G wagon or something on the way to Starbucks, this guy would be in black mourning for a month straight, let alone Joe Rogan. Do you know what I mean? So the fact that he has no emotion for his actual family members, like blood, people who basically raised him <laughs> in any sort of way, but he has more emotion to cry about these comedians who he knows the darkest, deepest secrets of. <laughs> it's really crazy. <laughs> Eight and also 300. You're in pain and you're being defensive. Ah, you might be right. <laughs> I'll do mine later. She used to swim every day, though. There even you go. At, even at 98, you used to swim like a freaking walrus. Man. Well, no, it's your dad's. Okay, so it's your. Oh, you don't know her too well, but then you know that she swims every day. Uh, it's a lie. Dad's mom. Yeah. And he was yeah. one of 13, bro. One of 13. So oh, I, that's I have too like, many kids. I Who's busting that much and having, like, that's crazy. Religious. But my, my grandma, uh, grandma was super religious and just, <laughs> just nothing. <laughs> There we go. We've got a prelude to the funeral fit. So let's go to the funeral fit. Let's actually go because this is legitimately one of the most insane things I've seen in my entire life. Like legitimately. Like insane things I've seen in my entire life, right? So let's see here. Let's go. Let, I'm actually going to type in the words funeral fit <laughs> and see what happens on Google because I legitimately don't get this, right? <laughs> we will see the chat, the ting and the zing. No, I don't want to be part of that show at all. So there is something about it, right? So let's see. Um, Where is it? You see this? I've got it on the screen. Can you see that funeral fits, right? There is something in this funeral fit stuff, right? So he's not maybe alone. I'm typing it in. There's something in there. You don't want to pull up. Oh, who's that girl? Um, Influencer. Uh, funeral... Um, what does she do again? Influencer funeral pictures. Do you remember that during the pandemic? That girl who took a picture of her dad's casket. There we go. We got it. We got it. We got it on the screen. Got it in one. Um, so there we go. Right. Do you remember this thing? 
this is a big situation. So this is maybe Brendan Shaw being it's like, oh look, what's this stuff? Um we've got a super chat here. I hope you're gonna hear the sound in a few seconds because it's always bloody delayed. Will it play? Will it play? Will it play? Hurry up. Let's move this tab across here so we can play at the same time. But this is basically the same thing, right? Yeah, so there, there we go. That's basically the same thing. That's essentially the same thing, right? This is the same thing. I don't care. So this social media, what's she called? She's called he Jane. To understand uh, his dad oh, yeah. him he was better than everyone else in his school. He literally created a redact narcissist. <laughs> Big up drone adventures for the five dollar super chat. You are one hundred percent right. This is definitely the fault of his parents. One hundred percent. They enabled and encouraged this horrible behavior. And let's not also um, let's not also fling Michigan. Let's not also um absolve his you know peers and his people that he employs or he pays to be his friends from from absolution either they have also kind of built and kind of added to this case and made him into the monster he is at the moment because no one is willing to call him out because they don't want to you know jump off the gravy train but anyway do you remember this influencer this happened i think if i'm not mistaken during the peak of the pandemic i remember the story going semi some semi viral this influencer called jane rivera she took these pictures looking hot and cute in front of her dad's casket right when he passed away right legitimately insane social media influencing sort of stuff but i remember the time she said something like oh people don't understand because my dad told me i could do what i want i could live but just basically narcissistic entitled bratty sort of behavior sort of stuff but i remember this being the only thing that i remember seeing that could constitute being like a funeral fit right somebody legitimately like look at this picture i'm gonna zoom into this one but look look at this picture look at this um she legitimately has got like a hot girl outfit on like this is an outfit that you could go to club live wearing do you know what i mean like this is legitimately a hot girl outfit um anyway this is brendan and his wife i guess on the way to go here to his grandmother's funeral and this when i saw this picture at first i thought first of all it came from her profile which will make a lot more sense because you know you know for lack of a better term, we know what the deal was with her. So it makes all sense if she would have posted that. But the fact that he posted it on his Instagram is the insane bit. Like, it's the insane bit about it. Like, the fact that he posted it is fucking wild. <laughs> of all the times, you would imagine, you would think most funerals or even weddings for the most part, the weddings like that weddings probably are not like that actually I, I feel like weddings nowadays that people go to they, they do kind of make it about themselves you do get a lot of that you get sometimes especially i'm thinking about my friends that i follow online because it feels like this summer there's been so many weddings and all my friends have been posting pictures of themselves getting ready on the way there and you rarely if ever saw even the pictures of the fucking brood and the, the bride and the groom you just saw pictures of them going so a lot of people are making weddings and stuff all about them there's a lot of kind of main character syndrome existing out there in the world so maybe this isn't that big of a deal but you have to be you have to be really really redacted to go to a funeral where you're meant to be reflecting on the life of somebody that meant something to you it's a moment for you to maybe you know it's not necessarily about you for once maybe take time to reflect you're probably stricken with grief anyway so the time for you to basically remember to put on a fit that you think is going to be good enough to even share on social media is not there but to even take that picture of the way that, it's fucking deranged deranged absolutely deranged and the fact that they both refuse to wear all black too maybe says a lot about it as well like that says a lot about it too the fact that they refuse to even do the bare minimum of like wearing black to maybe you know mark how somber the occasion is and to really kind of ground yourself and to just kind of you know um make yourself a part of the group and not kind of stick out like a soft one because if you're wearing the outfits that they're wearing why not just wear a purple suit why don't they go in a red suit why don't just go in a dulce cabana suit a gucci suit why not <laughs> i mean grandma died let's put on the let's put on a nice wear let's put on my balenciaga jacket let's put on my snapback hat let's throw on my saint laurent boots why not just do that this is legitimately insane the, the, the caption as well is, is the worst right the caption makes it even worse than what it is. That's a, a real icing on the cake. Funeral fit. My grandma would have wanted me to flex on my family just a tad or just tad, right? Not even a tad, just tad. So everything doesn't, doesn't really be flipping right correctly. It really comes across a bit tard dude. I don't even want to say the word, but you know what I mean. And then just the face behind it too. The sort of like, he's there, but he's not their face the wife just having an absolute whale of a time like clearly enjoying the fact that she's 
outside. <laughs> and actually spending time with her other half. He's not on a... Like, this is the face of somebody that's actually happy to be out with their other half. Like, legitimately, genuinely happy. Like, I don't get time with him anyway. He's always on a road. He's always with other men, you know, hanging around, telling dick jokes and stuff. This is the time that I actually get to spend with him. So I'm going to enjoy it. Fuck you if, you if you hate on it. But... God damn it, bro. This is your grandmother. You should be the one being like, hey, babe, put the phone down. Because I've been there before. I remember my first funeral that I went to, which was really flipping sad, RIP Bob forever. Um, This kid that I grew up with in my area, who was the first kind of kid that I remember dying, right? The first kind of real kind of close friend I remember passing away in really tragic circumstances too. He was in, you know, he was in a gang, unfortunately. And, uh, you know, my area was really rough. I kind of grew up in the middle of all that stuff. But luckily, I didn't really take part in it, even though I had friends that are kind of, you know, in the middle of wars and postcode wars and stuff. And he ended up passing away in a really tragic way. I think he was on his way back from football. And one of his ops, unfortunately, caught him slipping and kind of ran behind him with a bike lock, I think. I think it was a B. I think it was a bike. If I'm not mistaken, it was like one of those kryptonite locks, those massive chains. And he went behind him and just smashed him back. He said, allegedly, from the police, what we read or what we were told was that he instantly died from that one hit like it basically you know put him out to pasture even though they ended up stomping him out as well which he died in a really gruesome way and he's one of my close friends in the hood like someone that i kind of saw all the time he'd always kind of, you know the kind of kid that would always be shouting your name from like two streets over you know asking you about your mom just really cool and he passed away and i remember going to his funeral and it was i was kind of it's weird when you go to a funeral at that age. I think I might have been like 13 or something. You don't really process, you can't really, even at that age, I was, when I was a teenager, I didn't really process it too much. I didn't process it too well. So I remember not really kind of figuring, I it couldn't I couldn't necessarily get it around my head that it, it happened. But I remember I was, I was there and I remember like getting out my phone and trying to take a picture as they were lowering the casket into the, into the grave. And I remember my friend going to me, hey, what are you doing, man? No, no, you don't, you don't do that. You don't do that. I instantly kind of remembered where I was. But I remember that being my natural inclination to kind of just take my phone out and record it. Or oh, my friends passed away. I went to kind of hold on to that memory. And he said, hey, don't do that. No, don't do that. That's not what you do. Like, just reflect on it. And I put my phone away. But all it took was just that one person to kind of make me kind of, oh, yeah, shit, you know what I'm going to do? We're at a flipping funeral. What are you doing? And I was 13 years old. 13. <laughs> this man is 30, whatever he is, close to 40 years old. And you're going to funerals and you're posting fits fit checks of your like i just i don't know man I, I don't know i have i have no words really i really have no words maybe it's not that big of a deal because like he said he wasn't really close with the grandma maybe as a family this is what they do anyway because i know some cultures um sort of celebrate the passing of somebody is kind of seen as like a good thing right that they're kind of passing over into a new kind of realm or whatever it may be um it's a chance to maybe celebrate and honor the person's life but there is something quite, I think, like, because, again, I, I never got the chance to meet my grandparents because my grandparents passed away before I, you know, because they were, they, were, they were back in Africa. And I just got a chance to meet them or anything. But there must be something quite important about a grandmother passing because usually people have really close relationship with their grandmother. Either they're not close or they're really close. I don't really hear people saying they have, like, a meh relationship with their grandparents it's usually you're super close to them or you're not close at all and usually if you're not close because they just don't live near you or because maybe they're falling out with your parents but usually they're kind of the people who would go out their way to maybe repair or fix the wrongs that they've done with your mom and dad so they want to so then you end up having a really close relationship with them so usually you'd imagine that kind of person being the matriarch or whatever maybe of the family or the real head or whatever it may be they want to hold everything together there'd be it'd be quite a somber moment when they do pass away because you remember damn man grandma Grandma used to pick me up at football practice even though she was tired and she'd have to walk with a cane she'd come and watch me play she'd want to play computer you know what I mean like you would be like a you had these really interesting stories about this old lady that you somehow loved to bits even though you had nothing in common because she was you know somebody that you kind of saw your mum in and she kind of saw her child you know there's whatever it may be but it, it was just all, all I'm saying is that You'd have so much things running in your head at, the, at that time, remembering all the things that happened, remembering all the time you lost, the five times you didn't you didn't call back and re regretting it, that you, don't, you wouldn't even be thinking about fits. You'd just be like, oh God, man, I miss that person. I miss that person. So it's really, it's really sick to think that they went there with this. It's, it's, it's intriguing. It really is intriguing because for sure, this, that these outfits aren't cheap. For sure, these are designer. For sure, they went there to go and party and stuff. 
it's just wild man honestly it's absolutely wild it's especially after the prelude that we saw where he was kind of taking the piss out of himself that he was gonna use opportunity to go and sell merch or imagine he went and did a, a gig at a club around the corner quickly and did a little popping and you know did did like a few minutes on the stage <laughs> whilst his grandma was being put into her grave like, it was like oh, i don't know what do you guys think in the chat? Do you think it's a big deal? Do you think people are over, um, over analyzing it? Would you have done this if you weren't that close with your parents anyway, or close to your grandma, grandparents, or family members, or whatnot? Would you be posting your outfit or fit check or like a mirror check of your full body outfit? Like, is it something that you would have done? Let me know in the chat because maybe I'm just you know. Well, oh, someone saying, Proven said, when my grandmother passed away, I told my cousin the same thing. You're here to pray for her or get your insta uh, or get your insta pick for your comments and hearts. I went, I, I went suck on him. What do you mean? Also, as if like you, you want, you didn't like it. I'm assuming, right, Proven? Um, the DXJ says someone somewhere made a huge mistake with you if you can't grasp the depth of the situation by your mid thirties. Exactly. Now, as a human being, you should have enough awareness to know that this is unacceptable behavior. Exactly. I think even I should have known at 13. I'm not giving myself even excuses because I was 13. I probably should have known at 13. You shouldn't take a picture of your friends, um, of your friends, you know, uh, coffin being, let, you know, lowered into the grave. You shouldn't be doing that. But again, I was just thinking back at it. I was just so in my own head. I didn't even, I was just on autopilot. And it all took literally was my friend just being like nudging me like, hey, what are you doing? Put your phone back in your pocket, man. And it's like, oh, yeah, do you know what I mean? Quick, and I realized where, I realized where I was again. That sort of thing. But I'm just thinking, like, would I even post an, like, would you even have, would you even post an Instagram story? I'm on my way to my, like, what? Now, even that people would be, would see it as weird. Like, you're making it about yourself. Like, you're, you know what I mean? Main character syndrome again. Um, You're sharing absolutely every little detail about your life that you probably don't need to share. Because even probably thinking about it, looking back, it was pretty weird that she would be sharing pictures of herself, you know, with the miscarriage thing in hopes on the first place anyway, right? I mean, that story I mentioned prior. But then again, to be fair, if you're a public figure, which she kind of is, I think she might be verified on Instagram too. And considering what um, that lady, Chrissy Teigen, did and other celebrities have done and, you know, other women do on social media, it's kind of like a way to maybe deal with the issue in public to kind of not, you know, make it, not normalize it but let other women know also hey miscarriages happen even someone like me that's prominent someone that you think is perfect you know this thing can happen to me there's a kind of shared experience there so maybe that's something that you know you can put to one side but the funeral fits Whew. the naughty nomad says um, there's a time and a place for everything you are that you are to pay respects to not to snap your pics or clout maybe he is there to practice his stand up for the crowd you'd be surprised imagine doing stand-up at a funeral the one, i remember the one thing i do remember the funny clip i remember seeing i don't know if you guys remember seeing it it's a viral clip of some guy i think he might be irish and i guess he was a comedian and he kind of and if i'm not mistaken the the theory or the story around it was that he, he had a terminal illness and he passed away and he didn't want any friends to be sad so he recorded a comedy set like he recorded it inside like it was like a little i guess they put a speaker inside the ground or in the coffin and it played as the coffin was being lowered and he was basically doing a comedy set like and it was making everyone laugh and the thing and that was a quite a real bittersweet moment because they all got to hear his voice one final time but he was also kind of taking the piss out of them and ripping into people that were, you know, maybe they're not there and stuff. It was quite fun. But that's the only time I've seen it. For the most part, you know, most people don't necessarily turn flipping funerals into an opportunity to do a set. But, you know, maybe maybe we're the ones who, um, <laughs> now nah, he would kill finally, <laughs> Mr. Singh. <laughs> oh, I don't know, man. <laughs> he would kill get it get it no nah, but anyway that's I, I, I got nothing more to add to this it really is just one of those things you look at and you're like did they they did what you just shake your head and you're like oh my god man like <laughs> and again like i said if this was his, his wife's account i would make more sense i'd understand if it was on her account but the fact that he posts on his like have you got zero friends like none that would just reply back like huh like loads of fluss you know laughing crying emojis 
or like you are absolutely in, insane what are you doing like not no one says that in your, in your dms no one there's none of those kind of comments exist like i just don't understand it i really don't understand how someone goes goes about living a life where you just do the most redacted things in general no one calls you out because you pay them right essentially you got paid you know you pay your friends to be your friend so they don't call you out because they continue to want to be paid and everyone else is scared because they don't want joe rogan to not invite them to their podcast like they did lose because the thing i think is real because it's no coincidence that Luis J. Gomez is probably the fiercest person to kind of, maybe even Big J, because Big J doesn't get invited too. So Luis J. Gomez and Big J go after Brendan more than Dave Smith does. So it's no surprise that when, you know, last time they did do Legion of Canada, last time I think Dave Smith mentioned a story where he tried to get those guys to come along with him and Joe was like, no, nah, no, nah, only you. He didn't want to bring, he didn't want him to bring Big J and Luis, Luis J. Gomez to the Joe Rogan experience. So clearly, you know, insulting brendan and making fun of him does lead to some real life consequences which means you don't get invited onto one of the biggest shows in the world especially if you're a comedian you kind of need to be in joe rogan's good graces if you want to amplify your voice and whatnot so it does make some sense but god damn it man <laughs> and of course here's eric c telling me where's your city shirt my city shirt's never coming sir eric c it's never never been there ever 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 not in a million years my friend not in a million years and even though the city in manchester might be temporarily blue right now eventually the red dawn is coming you know that you know that yourself you know that as soon as pep leaves you guys are fucked let's be real let's be for real let's be real you know that my friend you know that <laughs> 